Google Cloud Platform or GCP is one of the best cloud platforms that you can use to host your workloads and applications. But did you ever get confused before while trying to create a VM and did not know exactly what machine type or family to use for that specific workload? Like all of the other cloud providers, in GCP there are many machine types and VM families and series and each type has its own use and reason to be chosen. If you want to know what and how to choose the right VM for your workloads on GCP or Google Cloud Platform, then stay tuned and keep watching to the end. Also, don't forget to hit that like button to help the video reach more people as well. It will help greatly and I would really appreciate it. So, Google Compute Engine is one of the main and core services in GCP and it's used by many other services as well such as GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine and even Dataproc and many other services that automatically provision and manage VMs for you on GCE or Compute Engine. So knowing what the various machine types are and when to use a specific type is a very important knowledge and information that you should have all of the time. This will help you at the time of building your GCP environment or if you want to test a specific workload if you're evaluating GCP and while provisioning your workloads and while sizing and doing the costing for these workloads as well. And when you look in some details, you'll find out that not any VM type is suitable for any type of workload. There are specific guidelines and constraints that you need to follow to choose the right type of a VM if you're wanting to host a specific workload. For example, if you're looking for cost efficiency over a long period of time, such as one year or three years or even more, then you will need to use a specific family or a specific series of VMs. However, if you're looking for better performance, then there is a better suitable type of VMs to be used. Same goes for specific workloads or specialized workloads, such as SAP workloads. And these workloads require a specific VM size and type, and they require you to stick and adhere to specific recommendations and guidelines from both Google and SAP as well. So in order to make this as simple as possible, I will now go through the four main types of machine families in GCP. From there, I will go on to explain the differences between the VM types in these families. So the first of all, you have the most common VM type that are the general purpose machines or the general purpose VMs. These VMs offer the best price and performance ratio for a variety of workloads. There are five different series of VMs in this family. Two of them are pure Intel and two of these are pure AMD. And the last one actually uses a mix of AMD and uh, Intel platforms and CPUs. So if you're looking to have a cost optimized VMs, then you're looking at the E2 VMs. These offer up to 32 vCPUs and up to 128 GB of memory. That's basically 8 GB of memory per one vCPU. Now, E2 VMs have a predefined CPU platforms that are running, and they, as mentioned, they can run on Intel or AMD, and that is actually selected for you at the time of the VM provisioning and creation. And these E2 VMs actually provide the best or the lowest price on Compute Engine, especially when you are coupling them with committed use discounts for over one year or three years. You will get a massive amount of discount when you commit for three years with the E2 instances. The next level of VMs or the next series is the N2 VMs. These VMs will offer you up to 128 vCPUs. That's a lot. <laughs> and they will offer you 8 GB of memory per vCPU, that's the maximum that you can do. And basically you will end up with about one terabyte of memory 
if you are using 128 vCPUs. These are available on the Intel Ice Lake and Cascade Lake and these are the ones that will offer you the best performance according to Google's documentation. The next one is N2D VMs. These VMs are running on AMD platform and they will offer you up to 224 vCPUs with 8 GB of memory per vCPU. These are the ones that will offer you balanced performance and cost. Basically, they are about 13% or 10% less cost compared to the N2 family. The next series in the general purpose VMs is the Tau 2D VMs. These VMs are actually unique. They offer you up to 60 vCPUs and 4 GB of memory per vCPU. And these are available on the AMD platform as well. And what's unique about this series is that these VMs have the cluster threading disabled. Therefore, one vCPU is equivalent to an entire core. So generally when you look at sizing workloads on the cloud, when you look at the physical CPU core, in order to size this physical core on the cloud, then one physical core usually and generally will equal two vCPUs. So in this case, if you're having, let's say, four physical cores, you're looking at eight vCPUs when you go to the cloud. But this is not the case with the Tau 2D VMs because if you have four physical cores, you'll end up with four vCPUs on this series. The last item here is the N1 VMs, which basically GCP initially started with for a good amount of time. These are the first generation VMs. Honestly, they have been on for a long time and they will offer up to 96 vCPUs and 6.5 GB of memory per vCPU. And because they've been available for a good amount of time now, so they are available on a various platforms of Intel processors. So they are available on Intel Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Broadwell, and Skylake. The next family here is the Compute Optimized VMs. This is a more specialized family of VMs in a way. These VMs offer the highest performance per core on Google Compute Engine and are optimized for compute intensive workloads. These compute optimized VMs run on the Cascade Lake Intel processor. And they can sustain up to 3.8 GHz turbo on all of the cores. There is only one series of VMs in this family for now, which is called C2. You will start with four vCPUs and 16 GB of memory and until 60 vCPUs and 240 GB of memory. That's basically 4 GB per one vCPU. The next family here, also this is a specialized compute engine VM family. This is called the memory optimized VMs. This family offer VMs that are ideal for memory intensive workloads. These VMs offer more memory per core than any other machine family in Google Cloud Platform. And you can get up to 12 terabytes of memory on a single VM. There are two series of VMs in this family. The M1 VMs offer up to 4 terabytes of memory, while you can get 12 terabytes of memory if you go with the M2 VMs. And of course, these VMs are well suited for large in-memory databases such as SAP HANA as well as in-memory data analytics workloads. Now, the final very specialized machine family is the accelerator optimized VMs. This machine family utilizes the CUDA CUDA platform that is developed by NVIDIA and it does support VMs with GPUs to do many high computing power tasks such as machine learning, game rendering, and even high performance computing activities as well. These VMs feature NVIDIA's new Ampere A100 GPUs. And basically there is one single series in this family, which is the A2. Now, the A2 VMs come in different machine types, ranging from 19 to 96 vCPUs, 
and they offer up to 1360 GB of memory but what's unique about them is that each A2 machine has a fixed number of GPUs attached so basically you get one GPU per 12 vCPUs but then when you go to the max which is 96 vCPUs you can get up to 16 GPUs if you have the largest size which is 96 vCPUs and 1360 GB of memory so now after this quick brief on the various machine families in GCP you will be able to easily decide at least you will know where to start <laughs> what type of a VM you will need for a specific workload and in order to help you further there are a few guidelines that will make it very easy for you to select a VM type such as if the cost saving is a major factor for your workloads and if these workloads are standard workloads such as web applications or an application that does not require a lot of CPU and memory, then you can go with E2 series VMs, that is the general purpose VMs. These VMs are going to save you a lot of cost when you enable one or three years commitment. And as mentioned, you'll get a huge amount of discount if you even go with the three years commitment with the E2 series VMs. Now, if you're having an SAP workload, for example, and in specific also if you have a HANA workload, then you will need to choose one of the N2 or N2D, or you go to Compute Optimize to choose the C2 workloads. Or even if the database is large, then you will have to go with the M1 or M2 machine types, the memory optimized VMs. Now the exact series and VM size as mentioned depends on the SAP. First of all, it depends on the size of your workload and your data. And then it will involve the guidelines and the SAPs from SAP. And also then you have to look for the certified machine type to run that workload according to the SAPs and to the GCP certifications that are being put in place with SAP. Now. Google and SAP maintain this list of certified VMs and this is available publicly for you to choose from and see and this will help you smoothly deploy these specialized and these memory critical workloads on GCP. And another example that if you need to do machine learning or you need to process a massive amount of information and data then you will either need to use the C2 that is the compute optimized or A2 instances. If you're looking to render games or offer some remote or some gaming as a service, service, <laughs> then the A2 VMs are your only option in this case. So finally, there is this nice table that is made by Google in their documentation articles, which are very awesome set of articles you should read, by the way. <laughs> and this table can be a starting reference for you and what you need to do and choose for your various workloads and needs. So I really encourage you to check this table out and use it as a reference for whatever customizations that you will need later on. So I hope I was able to help and clarify the various VM types and families in GCP and hopefully now it is easy for you to choose the right VM for the workload that you have. Also I would like to hear from you if you had ever faced any issues with identifying the right VM for your workload and how did you handle that? What are the factors that you look at when you want to choose a VM to run your app on it? Do you look at the cost as a major factor? Do you consider the performance as your major factor? Or are you looking for something balanced between cost and performance? I would really love to see your comments and feedback about this in the comments section. Also, if you have any question or anything that you want to share, please don't hesitate to share it in the comments section. Also, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and click that bell button so that you get notified with new content. And please don't forget to check out my Google Workspace admin course on Udemy. This is a full comprehensive course that will give you all what you need in order to master the management of your Google Workspace domain and account. If you are an existing Google Workspace admin or considering to be one, 
then this course is all what you need. You can get it at a discounted price from the link that I will put in the video description. And once more, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was useful for you. And until I see you again in a new video.